What's happening guys? Today we're going to be going through product research and we're focusing on the black box of Helium 10 and the product sub tool or sub tab within the black box. This is a product database which you can search to uncover high potential products. So we're going to go through this and the filters and what you should be setting those filters at in order to find your next high potential product. So let's take a quick look. You can see here we're on the products tab in the black box in Helium 10. And this is the first way that we can search. You can see we've got products, keywords, competitors, niche, product targeting. But we're only going to focus on products in this session. Uh, we'll do another session on these and exactly what those are about, but also powerful features. So on products here, we can actually begin our search. The first thing is make sure your market is selected depending on where you're selling. Here we're going to use the US. Next, we want to select the category. So depending where you're currently looking, choose that. I'm going to choose industrial scientific again for our example. And you can also choose multiple if you wish at the same time. And it's going to filter only through those departments when looking for products. Monthly revenue. I'm going to keep this blank for now. I am going to put in a price and I'm going to put in a minimum price of let's be quite strict and put in say $29 here and review count. Let's put a maximum of 70 reviews. So we're telling the tool we don't want to find any offerings, any potential products with a price less than 29. That's going to keep us at a premium level so that we ensure or increase the probability of a good profit margin. And secondly, we don't want to find any listings with more than 70 reviews. That's going to filter them down quite, uh, quite aggressively so that you're finding the very low review competitors when doing this. Review rating, we're going to leave this blank. And shipping size tier, we're going to choose small and large standard size, but no, no bigger. In the advanced filters, a lot of these you can use later in your search if you need to narrow further. Let's say you're getting too many results. You can come in here and start using some of these. So I'm not going to cover all of them, but you can see here sales year over year. Price change, sales change. So looking at, you know, what percentage change do you want to see in the listings that are brought to you? So really specific. I'm going to leave these blank for now as well as best sales period sales to reviews. But here, monthly sales in units, this is super important. And we want to see a minimum of at least 300. If we wanted to get more strict, we could say 500. And that of course, will transfer into like 10 sales per day at 300 per month. So it just depends how many you're looking to do if you're looking to only sell products that sell a 1000 units a month, then you could input that here as well. So 300 is a really good point to put in here though as a minimum. That way you're avoiding slow moving type of products and ensuring that you're able to recoup your capital uh, in a reasonable time frame as well when selling. So here best sellers rank. If you do multiple categories here, I suggest you leave this blank because BSR best sellers rank so different between different categories. This is not so important. This is very much related to how many sales you will do. So if, as long as you have this in here, then you're good. The same is actually true of monthly revenue. That's not so important if we have price and monthly sales in here because that actually is going to uh, multiply with each other to bring us monthly revenue anyway. So these are the critical points I would put in. Number of sellers, really interesting. If you're looking for products that do not have multiple sellers, do not have hijackers or piggybackers, counterfeiters on them, then you could input number of sellers one or two. I would actually say put two as the, as the maximum here if, if you're looking to really avoid any listings with multiple sellers on them. The reason I say two is because remember, one seller can have 
a FBM and FBA option on one listing. And in that case, it would come across as two sellers. So I would put your max at two if you're ever trying to see listings that only have one seller on them. Fulfillment. So you can actually choose if you only want to see FBA or FBM options. Number of images. So that's really specific. If you only want to see listings with a certain number of images for whatever reason, you can do that. Variation count. This is really cool, I think. If you're searching categories, let's say like sports and outdoors, where a lot of products might have tons of variations, especially sport clothing or uh, things like gloves or even caps, hats, t-shirts, pants, shoes, anything like that's going to have a whole lot of variations, either in size or color, uh, sometimes even material. And very often private label sellers at the beginning want to keep it quite simple. So in terms of that, if you do want to keep it quite simple, what you can do is enter a max variation count of one. And that way you're only going to find listings representing really basic, simple products that you can then go and source. One of the benefits of that sourcing non variation type products is that your MOQ is much easier to scale. You're ordering one size and type of the product overall of a thousand units, let's say. So you get cost savings on that. If you're having to do small, medium and large of that thousand cuts that MOQ to what 333 each. So uh, that's another thing just to think about and that you can use through this tool here, uh, which is very powerful. I have not seen this on any other tool. Then weight. I do think weight is important. Check the FBA fee schedule for the maximum you want to go to. But I like to put a maximum of about four pounds in here. I don't want to go above that. Quite a bit less than that is great, but for over four pounds, it begins to get quite expensive. Even if you're in the large standard size, it starts to really build up. It's 38 cents per extra pound that you move up after two pounds. Here, this is very important. Again, if you're in a category like sports and outdoors and you're seeing far too many, let's say, T-shirts come through, types of products you don't want to see. What you can do is use this area here, exclude title keywords. So you can put in here T-shirt, gloves, hats, pants, shoes, whatever it might be that's coming up too often. And that way it's going to exclude any listings that have those keywords in the title and just target your search much more narrowly so you are getting exactly what you want. Title keyword search over here is the opposite of that. This is when you really want to focus on certain types of products. So maybe you already did the full category search and there's a specific type of product that you're looking for. And then you can use a certain keyword for this search to focus on listings that have that keyword in their title. So once you've filled all of this in, you can click on search. You can see it brings up all the results down here. We have the product, we have the sellers, we have the price, which is going to be very important. These will all be over 29 for now. Monthly sales, these will all be over 300. Monthly revenue which is a multiplication of these two, BSR, reviews, which are very important. None of these will be above 70 in this case. And then actions. So on any product, you can click on this and add it to your list or go to that page directly on Amazon where you can use your Chrome extensions as we did in the last video as well. You can open up Helium 10 X-Ray or Jungle Scout Pro Chrome extension or Viral Launch Market Intelligence, whatever you choose to use on Amazon. So that's another way you can do this. And you can just look at that market in general and how does it look? How do the top offerings look? How many reviews do they have? Is there price sustainability through the market, etc. 
so really easy and add to list is a great feature that way you have a, a nice short list as you do this at the top of helium 10 you can see here my list and that way if you click on that all of those saved products are going to be in there so now that we have this filled in, we're going to scroll through these results looking for products that are not brand dominated and that perhaps we could differentiate or go a lot further with. Okay, so here's one product. You can see this is a digital anemometer barometer. So this is something for uh, wind speed and temperature testing. Uh, so you could look more into this. It is electronic. So that depends on your outlook in terms of electronics. Are you happy to do that? Are you happy to really get into testing these samples? Uh, but that's something you're going to have to consider as well as batteries. That often requires has passing hazmat reviews. So that's something you would need to consider here. But you can see $40. There's only one seller on this listing. They're doing 500 sales a month and they only have 55 reviews. So really strong. Uh, haven't seen this product before. So that's quite interesting and I would save this to the list and then keep moving and right after that this one's also interesting this is a dual head stethoscope so 16 reviews doing almost 500 sales a month at $40 as well with one seller so very interesting I'm going to add that to the list so here's another interesting one this is peg number board so it's like a kid's toy but this is like the opposite of the electronics we just found so uh, these should be fitting to some of you this one is going to be very very basic and simple it's not going to break so that's something you could look into as well then here you can see over 700 sales a month at 31.50 price point with only 54 reviews so those are three products we already found that look promising from quite complex to super basic, just depending on your preference in terms of that. And then what you guys can do is just jump over to your list and you'll see you will have those products saved here and you can look further into them. So you have a nice quick way to search specific categories or multiple categories at once and really define those searches very very well i'd urge you don't fill everything in at first fill in the critical pieces like we just went through now and then you can go back and fill in a few more uh, critical criteria points where you need to filter down or maybe get more specific or exclude certain types of products from coming back to you so that is how to use the products piece of the black box if you guys found this useful please do like this video and subscribe below so you stay tuned for the next ones we're going to be going into the keyword section next and then those other ones we touched on niche and product targeting as well as competitors so there's actually a lot in terms of these sub sections these sub tools in the black box but i hope you found that helpful and i'll see you guys in the next session